red is the color. Um, we at Rappler are extremely thankful that on this day, the international date and impunity against journalists, uh, our work and our struggles are being recognized by National Democratic Institute here in the U.S. and just a few hours earlier in Amsterdam by Free Press Unlimited. I've been a journalist for more than 30 years and as a conflict reporter, a war zone correspondent, I've never gotten as many threats as I get now um, as the, the founder of Rappler. So you know we're living through a moment of history. This is one of those moments where the mission of journalism has never been stronger. And despite the online and the offline attacks against us, we find the courage to hold the line. I've had the privilege to report on people power movements and the end of one man authoritarian rule through much of Southeast Asia, starting with people power in the Philippines in 1986. It was an extremely exciting time to start my career. Five and a half years ago, we started Rappler with the belief that technology, social media, strengthens people power exponentially. And we rode the crest of social media adoption, growing 100 to 300 percent in our first few years, quickly becoming one of our country's top online news sites. We scaled fast because of social media. The Philippines is a Facebook country. Nearly 97 percent uh, of all Filipinos online, you're talking about roughly 58 million Filipinos, 97% are on Facebook. That is our public space. Um, and, and it was one that when Rappler began, truly strengthened democracy and, and empowered us. We were proof of social media for social good. Today though, I watch with horror as authoritarian leaders in many countries around the world use social media's exponential power to spread propaganda, use anger and hate to manipulate their people and to create alternative realities. Like many, I fear that the pendulum of democracy is swinging the other way globally, enabled by social media. In the Philippines, the failure of elite politics to deliver democracy's promise paved the way for the rise of Rodrigo Duterte and a drug war that's killed thousands. I can't give you the exact number because that certainty of numbers is also a casualty in our war for truth. When we, what we published, when we finished our data gathering, we published our social media propaganda series in October 2016. We proved the online ripple using investigative journalism to ferret it out and to show it. Uh, we proved that a sock puppet network of 26 fake accounts can actually influence 3 million other Facebook accounts. 26 fake accounts, 3 million others. That's the ripple. Right after that series was published, we were pounded by online attacks for about a month. I received an average of 90 hate messages per hour. I reeled for about two weeks. I shouldn't say that because we're being live streamed in the Philippines, but <laughs> the data, the data that we collected in nearly two years show how disinformation was deployed by what we now call the propaganda machine. We're six months ahead of you. Our, we elected our president six months before you did. When a lie, is said 10 times, truth has, can catch up. But when it's said a million times, that lie is the truth. Especially when it's backed by online state-sponsored hate, exploiting the fracture lines of our society, and among them in the Philippines, the gaps between the rich and the poor, the gap between the rural areas and Imperial Manila. Journalists, are no longer the gatekeepers to the public space. We know we lost that role. To the tech companies running these platforms, I appeal to you to take action, be transparent, and 
be accountable. If you're not transparent, you can't be accountable. You've built a city. Now put the traffic lights in place so that the cars don't crash into each other. Stop the impunity. We're seeing free speech used as an excuse for posts that incite hate and violence. That's deployed against people like me, against the journalists, activists, and anyone perceived to be critical of government. The excuse of free speech is being used to stifle free speech. Rappler is not anti-government. We are not anti-Duterte. In fact, he recognizes the coverage, our coverage of his campaign helped get him elected. We're journalists, and we will not be intimidated to manipulate their people and to create alternative realities. Like many, I fear that the pendulum of democracy is swinging the other way globally, enabled by social media. In the Philippines, the failure of elite politics to deliver democracy's promise paved the way for the rise of Rodrigo Duterte and a drug war that's killed thousands. I can't give you the exact number because that certainty of numbers is also a casualty in our war for truth. When we, what we published, when we finished our data gathering, we published our social media propaganda series in October 2016. We proved the online ripple using investigative journalism to ferret it out and to show it. Uh, we proved that a sock puppet network of 26 fake accounts can actually influence 3 million other Facebook accounts. 26 fake accounts, 3 million others. That's the ripple. Right after that series was published, we were pounded by online attacks. For about a month, I received an average of 90 hate messages per hour. I reeled for about two weeks. I shouldn't say that because we're being live streamed in the Philippines, but <laughs> the data, the data that we collected in nearly two years show how disinformation was deployed by what we now call the propaganda machine. We're six months ahead of you. Our, we elected our president six months before you did. When a lie is said 10 times, truth has, can catch up. But when it's said a million times, that lie is the truth. Especially when it's backed by online state-sponsored hate, exploiting the fracture lines of our society, and among them in the Philippines, the gaps between the rich and the poor, the gap between the rural areas and Imperial Manila. Journalists are no longer the gatekeepers to the public space. We know we lost that role. To the tech companies running these platforms, I appeal to you to take action, be transparent, and be accountable. If you're not transparent, you can't be accountable. You've built a city, now put the traffic lights in place so that the cars don't crash into each other. Stop the impunity. We're seeing free speech used as an excuse for posts that incite hate and violence. That's deployed against people like me, against the journalists, activists, and anyone perceived to be critical of government. The excuse of free speech is being used to stifle free speech. Rappler is not anti-government. We are not anti-Duterte. In fact, he recognizes the coverage, our coverage of his campaign helped get him elected. We're journalists. And we will not be intimidated. For the men and women of Rappler, good morning. <laughs> um, this award is for your hard work, for the many sleepless hours that you've had, and most of all, for your courage. We will shine the light. We will hold the line. Uh, delicious. <laughs>